And so there's a long period of work here. And what I want to do, I'd like to initially talk a little bit about some of the things that I see in this work that sometimes I think is unseen by people that uh, particularly that don't know Fanny's work well. Um, and that, I want the first thing I'd really like to talk about is um, to give a little bit of history. Uh, Fanny graduated from, uh, in, in, fi in fine arts from the, uh, in Columbia in 1960. In, and I think all of Latin America, the Americas were at that moment were sort of soaking in abstraction. And um, uh, Fanny was then painting in a gestural abstract style which is not represented here, but is very much part of her, her work. And then very much turned to, um, to geometric abstraction. And, and Fanny, uh, you, Fanny, you told me that that happened in, that started happening in London, is that right? Yes, because when I left Colombia, I went to, uh, I came here for a year at the University of Illinois, and then we, went to live for three years uh, in Monterrey, Mexico. And there it was when I had my own one solo show with one box. And at that time I was doing the, the abstract expressionist that you were talking about. And, and then we went to live in, in England for three years. And, and there it was a start like an evolution of my paintings. And the geometry started really in, in the 74, when I came back to Mexico. One thing that I really want to, when I mentioned earlier that I, I want to talk about things that I think are unseen in your work, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the process that you go through to, to, to make a painting, to make a finished painting. And because I think that process is so integral to, to understanding what actually gets put on canvas and put on the wall. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and I think now that when you actually begin a piece initially, <coughs> you are, you're, I think that you begin this process in the form of problem solving, that you have, a, you, 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 choose a composition or you begin to choose a composition and work through that process until you get to a resolution of that problem that you can then turn into a finished painting. The, uh, I work uh, as, a comp as you said, the composition at the beginning, but it's very spontaneous uh, painting, color and structure together. It's mm -hmm. not one first and then the other. It's, right. It all goes together. And I do a lot of studies that, that, that maybe you can see after the, 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 <laughs> the lecture. <laughs> and uh, it takes me, sometimes it takes me like a month doing uh, studies for the painting that, I don't, that I'm going to do. I could have done uh, several paintings from the studies, but at, at, the, at the end I only choose one, and that's the only one that goes to the canvas. Uh, but the process is very important. And that, you're working then initially in watercolor? Uh, sometimes I work on uh, acrylic, a pencil, uh, also using now uh, marcadores. Marker. Markers. Marker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so those of you who haven't noticed, there are four studies here uh, that, that Fanny brought into the gallery for the predecessors of this finished painting. And I think it's very, uh, it, for me, the process that, that, um, uh, that, has, that happens to get to a, a finished work is, is really, really fascinating. Because as Fanny says, she sets up a, these problems for herself that have to do with form and color and composition and works through them until she gets to a, a resolution that, that she feels that works. And hugely important in that whole process is the selection and the mixing of colors. And um, at the opening of this show, uh, I was having a conversation with someone who uh, was and we were talking about talking about the colors in the in the painting and the fact that 
that I think that uh, looking at a finished, one of Fanny's finished works, they often appear very, very static. And I think, in fact, they're the antithesis of that, that they are so alive and so layered and so textured, but done in such a refined, a, a refined way that you know, a lot of that, in my mind, is sort of unseen. And that's why seeing the, the, uh, the, the studies that are you're so fortunate to be able to see here, um, I think is really, is really an important part of the understanding how these, how these paintings are made. Also, the works on paper, the large compositions on paper that are here are so fascinating because you can begin to perceive some of the layers, uh, some of, the layers of, of color in these individual pieces. Also, I think uh, very much uh, allied to the, to the color is, um, I can only, in my experience, I, I would somehow I relate this to looking at a, at a, a, a Rothko, for instance. I had, the, I had an almost transcendental experience in the Rothko Chapel the first time I was there, and to the point where I had to leave several times and go back, because there's just, the, 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 these paintings are so, so unbelievably intense. And I think that when you start really paying attention to the color in, in, uh, in Fanny's paintings, you begin to kind of fall into them in the same way that you, could, that you have that experience with some, some Rothko paintings. So Fanny, can you talk a little bit about so you you have you get to the to the point that you you've you've chosen the composition that you're going to try to, to try to work through to a finished painting, and then talk a little bit about your process of selecting the colors and how you how you how you actually make those colors. Mm -hmm. But the color is already selected when I do a small mixture of, co of color for this for the small studies. But then I had to recreate those colors for the big pan, pan canvas. And the is, is, so I know that when I do this on paper, it will be a little bit different on canvas because it's a different medium. So I had to work on that color. And the color is not only one layer of color. No. Is the, uh, I apply different layers, and the color gradually is become <laughs> the color that I wanted. I mean, it grows, so so it has like a five layers of color. So I spend a lot of time trying to do the the, the mixture of color because the, I never apply a, a color straight from the tube. It's it's only mixture, mixture. And then I apply the color and I sat, sit there and I look at the painting and see how it's related to the other colors. And it's a lot of, of meditation too when I, when I paint it. It's, it's not a cold process. It's, it's, it, it has to have something spirituality in it. It has to do something with myself. Nothing that I can explain, but it's... it's is the result of my life, of the, my personality, the places that I have visited. Everything is there, I think. <laughs> and that's in the color as well as the, this, pro this problem solving that you go to to reach this, this composition. Uh, I, I think that's what I, I, I'm interpreting you to be saying, that the color is here, there's very much an emotional content, a spiritual content in the, in the composition as well as the color. Yes, and also the structure. Right, right. It's like a unity. Yeah. At what point do you decide the size of the canvas? Uh, more or less at the beginning, because I have finished, uh, let's say, one painting like that, a small one. I say, well, maybe I will do a bigger canvas and uh, uh, horizontally different, and also I will choose different colors. Because I always want to, that my paintings are there, uh, every painting is like a different problem. So it's, I start from, uh, as a, although I have the same language, because you can recognize that are my works, every painting I try to be the, a different problem. And I could start with a different format and uh, in the process of drawing and 
I could change a little bit the, the, the size of the canvas. Do you work with particular sizes of canvas? No, not really. Not really. No. So that's part of the solution to this, yeah. Um, to be a little more provocative, I know that oftentimes people uh, assume that there's some architectural inspiration mm -hmm. in your work. And we've talked about that a little bit, about that that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing I've heard is that there, there's, I think there's a tendency to think, oh, there, that there is also some, um, some inspiration in pre-Columbian design or pre-Columbian <coughs> textiles. But I think this is, that is not the case. And I know that you have, I know you have things to say about that. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of architects here. <laughs> I, I have talked to them about that. I admire very much architecture. I, I always admire architecture and I love to see the buildings. And as an artist, you are all the time looking at scenes, scenes uh, new scenes, old scenes. And so. But the, in my painting, I don't relate it to architecture. Only the way that maybe architecture could be called the, 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 the structure of the painting or the composition of the painting. And as far as uh, pre-Columbian art or um, American Indian art, I, I a great admire pre-Columbian art, I a great admire of, <laughs> of the American Indians, and, 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 but, uh, but it, that, it has nothing to do with my paintings. I always try to be very creative and, and try to uh, reach my own solutions, my own colors. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I don't love all those, uh, 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 how do you say? <laughs> all those other yeah. 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 So it's really, I mean, this is all part of basically who you are, but, but, the, uh, but the, the, your painting is, is I, I, I think I, I was fascinated when we were talking about talking about having this conversation, and you you explained this process in this manner that you just stated as as problem solving, as resolving a problem, mm -hmm. and um, I um, uh, I think it's so interesting that in this process that what Fanny produces is this <laughs> little this. Um, Actually, she's almost documenting her own work with these series of studies and sketches and co larger compositions to get to this finished uh, work on canvas. And it's, um, I think it's a remarkable way to work. And, um, it, and, so in, and um, it requires a kind of, as you say, a kind of almost meditative state in order to, in order to get to that, to the finished, to the finished product. And, um, before we ask some questions, ask for questions from all of you, I, I the last few days been looking at a lot of your work, and I look at it on paper, where there the texture on, on the works on paper, is, um, it is much more apparent than it is on the I think in the, in the on works on, on canvas, and um, talk a little bit about how you want the the surface. Of the finished pieces to look. Uh, well, in the canvas, I want to look very clean, very uh, flat. Uh, although I consider that the painting is not flat at all, but but the the the, I'll say the visual aspect of the of the shape of the form should be flat, uh, very pure, mm -hmm. and 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 very. I'll say, uh, with the, I, when I start painting, I, I cannot do any mistakes, you know. It's not like, like uh, before in my abstract expression period, I can correct it and because I was using oil, so I had to be very sure what I'm doing. In the paper, it's, the, it's the, a little bit more the opposite because I choose the paper and I choose the, the the granulate paper, the Fabriano, that I like the texture of the, of the, of the paper. And in those, I don't use uh, masking tape. I do by hand. So it's on purpose. I, I, 
I, I don't want to hide the, the, my hand or the texture. Or, it's, it's a different medium. So that's what, that's what is, they are different. And also on some of the works on paper, the, there, are, there are pencil lines visible too, which, which never happens in no. a, a finished work. <laughs> I mean, the, the finished work is absolutely, as you say, completely yeah. pure and, and one surface almost. Yeah, little by little, I introduce new new scenes and in, in the paintings. It's not a big change, but it for me it's like an evolution of my of my work. Um, I I know that several of you said to me that you had questions you wanted to ask Fanny, and this is you uh, this is a perfect time because you've really got her here now, <laughs> so you can really ask questions. So. Did, uh, there were some questions about technique, I think, or uh, is any, anything out there from anyone? Well, I was mentioning about technique because people think that geometric art is easy. It isn't. And if, when you look at uh, Fanny's work, you can tell that it takes a lot of concentration, a lot of work to get those edges the way she gets it. She has to have a specific way of doing that. And uh, also the way she applies the paint. Does she use brushes, does she use a roller, uh, how many layers, uh, does she mix the color with a medium that is matte? Uh, if you, I don't know if you want to really talk yeah, about it. Yeah, I, I use the, the, ma the matte medium. <laughs> I use the matte medium because I want the, the color to be you no know, shine. Uh, uh, this has, there's a name for that. And, and what would you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, about the the the, the medium. Yeah, that you use a matte yeah, medium. And yeah. as you do this, is all with a brush, right? I use brush. I don't use the roller. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's the answer to the matte surface. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I use the, the mm -hmm. of course I ru I use the rule to take the measure and drawing first in the canvas. And then I put the masking tape every time I apply that color. And then I had to cover, if I put this red here, I do the other red on the other side. And I had to cover this uh, so it doesn't go the, this color into this, into this. So it's very careful. And how do you manage to keep your edges so clean? <laughs> <laughs> with ma masking tape. I put masking tape there, and then I put uh, paper there. And, uh, How do you prepare the canvas? Huh? How do you prepare the canvas? The canvas is cotton dock. And you put some uh, yes, on yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and as you work, how um, you begin My, a painting, and how long does that take you before you get to it? Well, this is not a, this is not a, this doesn't happen quickly. No, they, they no. It takes like a, for example, once I decided the, the, the painting and everything, uh, in, one, in one day I can look for the color and apply the color. It could be, if I lock it, I can do once, one month or one size or one painting with one color. So it will take for me like a, Three weeks or something like that. W working every day. No, no Saturdays, no Sundays. <laughs> 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 but I work in every day. And this all this is all happening in, in your studio. You know, if you're traveling or you you know you you paint in your studio. Yeah, if, if many artists uh, can can paint in when they travel. And, uh, I have a friend that came several days ago, Manuel Figueres, that's an artist from Mexico, and he brings the, the canvas roller and he starts painting here. So he, he, he went to see some shows, but he, he, cannot, he cannot stop to, pay, to, to paint. For me, it's diffi difficult to paint in other places where I go. I never do that. Gabriela. Yeah, I would like to know if you have, because you have larger canvas, if you have preliminary studies for those, you know, compositions, and and also I want to know if you keep, you know, notebooks, and if you do black and white, 
because your operation with color is the inverse of plus dx, who's a master of color. You're a mistress, how do you say, maîtresse of, of color, but in a, in a very intuitive way. So I want to know if you work black and white and also if you have preliminary studies. No, no. In fact, it's funny because in, in my paintings, there is seldom white. There is seldom. Black, yes. Black is one of my uh, colors that I, I love it. But uh, sometimes I put uh, white when, they comp when I start doing the, the drawings for the studies. And at, at the end, I, I finally cover the, the, the white. I don't know why. I don't, <laughs> don't have any explanation to that. Yeah, it's so, I don't know. But, but do you, you do keep notebooks of, of color notes and that sort of thing as you work? No, you know, no, because... It, as you would no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do some... Uh, muestras, ¿cómo se dice muestras? Uh, yeah, in, in, in paper, but the, when, I, when I, I am painting. But the, I don't do like Albers used to do, that Albers has a, 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 like a formula for everything. So he knows how much yellow he put, how much uh, blue he put, and I, I, I don't know that. So when sometimes if the, this work is uh, uh, damaged, I had to re redo it, the, the, this again. So I had to look again for the color, and I cannot guarantee it will be the same color because I don't remember how I did it, how I did the mission. You know? Actually, you, Gabriel, you said a very, a very uh, interesting thing when you said that uh, Fanny works in an intuitive way. And I think that that is a really, that's exactly kind of spot on way to describe this, I think. And how she contrasts with some of these other colorists that are, that are, is, where it's not intuitive. It's very almost mathematical. And um, so that, that's fascinating. And I think mm. you're kind of proving that out by, the, you know, the fact that you don't have a lot yeah. of, you don't keep a formula for each, no, for no. each color and that no, sort of thing. <laughs> I wanted to ask her, in talking about color, what attracted you, or what is the, um, when I started looking at your paintings, the one thing I loved was the variety of pastels and tones and colors, like especially your pink, which is so rarely seen in other abstract work, but it's very much from the Russian tradition. What was your inspiration for your pastels and I just think they look great, but... No. You, uh, you know, I don't have any inspiration. I admire a lot of art, I admire a lot of artists, and I have lived uh, and traveled and lived in different places and had the opportunity to see so many paintings, sculptures, and everything. I only say that everything that you have done or you have lived um, in any way uh, influence you. But it's something that is inside of you, so you cannot, uh, I mean, uh, without knowing maybe I have seen this color. I, I don't, I, it's not on purpose, you know. So everything has influenced me, but, but it's not, how do I say, very obvious. When I try to paint, I try to create my own colors. You think of the color first or the shape? More or less at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. Well, I think it's so interesting in this exhibition to look at the early works, um, of which are filled <laughs> of well, that's it, it, filled with color. Some of it very, very subdued. I'm looking at this painting uh, behind of the, from 1978 in the other room. It's very somber. <coughs> and then the earlier one from 1975, the stripe painting is is. Um, is uh, I wouldn't call it somber. It's 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 pretty magical to look at. But then the very recent paintings in the far room, these the blue ones. I the first time I saw them, were almost shocking because they're <laughs> so blue. And uh, that's not a color. That's those sorts of super saturated big areas of color were, were surprising to me. So yeah. is that something? These are the later works. Is that is that? Yeah, it's uh, more or less the, the later. That's what you're working on now. Right? Yeah, I'm not working okay. on now and that. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And any? Are there any other questions? Oh, yes. 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 Nora has some questions. Okay, you said that you put seven layers. 
Um, can they be the same day? Are there times when they change? Because one, one thing is your sketch. Do they end up being exactly like the sketch or do things happen because the color was a little bit too red or something happened? I'm sorry, no. I lost much okay. loud because I don't hear well the question. I'm making it to several questions. Are the, your sketches usually exactly like the final work? The studies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the one at the end that I selected is the, the yeah, it's, the, it's exactly like the final work with the difference that is on paper. So nothing happens. You are, you go strictly from what you came up with. Yeah. Maybe sometimes there is a small line or something there that I said, I don't need that. And I, 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 I forget about that, but I never make changes when, when the, in the big paintings. That's what I started working like a three weeks on trying to, to do the, the final work, you know. Yes, but you know when scale comes and you're in front of the canvas and there are times when things happen, are there times when you make a mistake that later helps you? I don't make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in this kind of work, it's difficult to make mistakes. I could make mistakes on, on the smaller studies, of course, because it's the process. But in this, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> Thank you. There are some artists who do the skin. And do what? I'm sorry? The, the small. They put it on the back of the wall of the uh, on the back of the door of the studio, and then they calculate each day how much am I going to do. You know some of those artists, uh -huh. and has that calendar process ever uh, hit you, or you don't consider the time of going from the small to the big one. Yeah, of course, of course. And there's no, you, you don't have a, you do a number of studies for each painting, so it's not like you do five studies for each painting. You just, you work with those studies until you get to the point where you yeah. think this is it. Yeah. Okay. And that's the one that doesn't change, is that final yeah, one. Yeah, the final one. And I think you have the final one here yeah. that this painting is based on. Yeah. 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 No, that's like a, one of the beginnings. So, yeah, yeah. So you see the change. I don't know if that is the last one. I know that. There is something that you haven't talked about, and it's your relationship to music and how you use music as some sort of an intuitive template to, you know, your compositions, you know, to nurture your compositions? Uh, I love music, so... Uh, but you work with music? I work with music. music. In fact, many critics <coughs> have talked about the, the influence of music in, in, in my paintings, and, and that painting that Clayton was talking about is uh, 81. The colors are very subdued, and there was a critic that said, you know him, Herman Rubiano? You know him. He said that the, 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 those colors have like a sordina, like, like in music, that they go, I don't say, a little like bit a down. Filter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But music, music, I use it uh, as a, a how do I say? Something that I need to, 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 when I work in, I need to hear the music. And I, I, I like classic music, I like uh, folk music, I like all kind of music. But especially I used to use, uh, to listen uh, chamber music. Uh -huh. Cham chamber music. Chamber. Yeah, yeah. 
because it's more what kind affine. of popular music do you, do, you, do you listen to? Huh? I'm, I'm curious about the popular music that you listen to. <laughs> I listen vallenatos, I listen Mexican music, I listen <laughs> Arab music, I listen Indian music, uh, American folk music. I, I, every time I go to some places, I, I have the... Uh, I buy the record and I, I like it, but especially I use, uh, I listen to classic music, yes. It's like uh, you are surrounded by, by the music. And, uh. um, I know we're, uh, God, we're it's getting to that time where we said we would conclude and look at, maybe we, Fanny will be here, you can ask your question standing in front of the work. And um, if there aren't any other questions, we can we can move around the gallery. And I I know there's lots of goodies here, and, and everyone probably could use another cup of coffee. <laughs> so um, for me, this is this is great to um, to um, it's a it's a very it's a privilege to always to hear an artist talk about their work, and not all of them are particularly articulate. So this is really <laughs> thrilling that you can you say very well what you you know I think. I, I understand even more now how you get from point A to point B in these in these large finished works. So um, I'm, I'm really happy this happened. I'm very glad. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I thank I thank Clayton. He has a big, very uh, admire my work. Very and a very good friend and and. I'm very pleased that he's here. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'm very pleased that you are here. I'm sorry that I'm not good lecture at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I can ask questions if uh, you go around. With it, with it. Yeah. Thank you for, for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. I also want to thank Leon Tobar, Amadiu, Laura, all the people that work at the gallery that really has uh, given me this opportunity to show my work in the gallery. And many people didn't know about how, how, was, how was my painting. They know I was an artist, but some people don't know about my work. So that would be a very good opportunity. Thank you. Yeah.